Good morning Year 6, today is 23rd of June 2020 and today we're going to be representing ratio using a part whole model. So I'd like you to pause the video here and write down our date and learning intention. Brilliant. So by the end of this lesson you should be able to use manipulatives. So manipulatives is being able to use actual concrete materials, actually using things that we'd usually use in the classroom, but at home we're going to have to get a little bit creative. And think about how you can represent and show things, show our ratio using fractions. Um, you're also going to think about how you can compare items, thinking about how you can make a bar model represent the sequences. And for some of you, as your challenge, you're going to be comparing similarities and differences. So let's get started. For today's lesson, you will need your pencil, paper, thinking hat, you'll need the worksheet that was emailed to you this morning, solving fraction problems, and a five minute timer. Make sure you've got all of those and let's begin. So for our starter today, I'd like you to have a look at the questions shown on screen and I want you to set your five minute timer and answer as many of those as you can. If you need more time, then that's okay, take some more time, but otherwise, Set your five minute timer, pause your video, and off we go. So, let's go through the answers. The answers are shown on screen. If there's any there that you're unsure of and you think, mm, I'm not sure how we got that answer, even if it's a few, or even if it's all of them, then please pop me an email and then I can give you some specific, some work that's specific to your needs, okay? So pop me an email and tell me if there's any of those that you think, mm, I don't know how we got that answer. It makes no sense to me. Otherwise, we'll move on to today's lesson. We're going to do a quick recap of last of yesterday's lesson initially. So you remember we talked yesterday about ratio language. And we talked about just phrases like for every mm, there is mm, and what that means and how we could write that as a ratio. Well, if you have a look on the screen, you'll see some apples and you'll see some courgettes. I'd like you to pause the video here and have a go at completing the sentence shown on screen as well as answering the three questions. Excellent. So let's go through the answers. For every five apples, there are four courgettes. Some countries, they call it a zucchini, but we're going to stick with the English way and call them courgettes. What fraction of the items are apples? So we're going to think about how we can link this with fractions because fractions and ratio, although different, they are linked. There is some crossover there. So we know that when we're talking about fractions, we're talking about how much there are in total and then and that becomes our denominator and then how much we're referring to is our numerator. So our fraction would be five ninths because there are five out of nine. Five ninths are apples. Just want to go back to at the top. I've also written that sentence for every five apples, there are four courgettes as a ratio. Okay, so five is the five apples is what we discussed first in our sentence, four courgettes is discussed second. So as a ratio, I put five to four. Okay, five to four. And we know that when we add that ratio together, we get our total, which is nine. Five to four. What fraction of the items are courgettes? So we know if we've got five ninths are apples, we can count them. We can see that four of them out of the nine of them are courgettes. So four ninths are courgettes. And if we were to represent this on a bar model, it would look like this, with nine being our total. So that our total is always shown on the top bar. And then underneath, we split up the bars to show how that nine is represented. So we've got five and a four. Five apples and four courgettes. So well done if you managed to get that. Now, for every three children, there are nine cups of squash. So I want you to think about how we could draw this sentence. Maybe have a go at drawing in your book. What would this sentence look like if it was drawn out? Well, it might look like this. So we can see here they've got three children, and it says for every three children,
there are nine cups of squash. So if I had another three children, I'd need another nine cups of squash. But here I've got three children, I've got nine cups of squash. And if I share that out equally, I can then see that each of them, how much each of them have. Okay, so three children, nine cups of squash, and I share it out equally between the three children. As a ratio, that would be written as three to nine. Three children, nine cups of squash. But what if only one child turned up? How much squash do we need? So imagine there's only one child. How much squash would we need? Well, we'd only need three cups of squash. Okay? So for, three, for one child, we only need three cups of squash. But if I take that one and I multiply it by three, to say that I've got three children, then I multiply the drinks I need by three to have nine cups of squash. So it, from three to nine is the same as one to three. Now here's our challenge. What if 15 children turned up? How much squash would I need? Super. Well, we know that if we had 15 children, that is five times the number shown on screen. So we were planning for three children. And for three children, we said we need nine cups of squash. To get from 3 to 15, we times by 5. So I need to do the same with my 9. I times that by 5. Whatever I times one, by, one side by, I times the other side by. And whatever I divide one side by, I must divide the other side by. So that would be 15 children. I would need 45 cups of squash. Wow. Better stick with the 3. So. Another question for you, looking at the relationship between the stars, the hearts and the lightning. I'd like you to pause the video here and I want you to have a go at writing the ratio of stars to hearts to lightning, completing the sentences and then we'll discuss them. Excellent. So we can count them up and we can see we've got six stars. So we can put six stars first and then for hearts I only count two. Hopefully you counted the same. And for the lightning, we've got three. So we can see here that in total, we have 11 pictures of, 11 pictures, but we have six of them are hearts, six of them are stars, two hearts and three lightning. So our ratio there is six to two to three. But our next question is, or our next sentence is, the number of stars is mm, times the number of hearts. So look at the number of stars and look at the number of hearts. How much times larger is the number of stars to hearts? What do you have to do to get from 2 to 6? That's right, you've got to multiply it by 3 or times it by 3. So it's 3 times the number of hearts. Now let's try the second sentence. The stars are mm, times the number of lightning bolts. Well, the stars are 6, the lightning bolts there are three. To get from three to six, we multiply by two. So the stars are two times the number of lightning bolts. And we can represent all of this information here on our bar model. So we can know we've got 11 in total made up of six stars. You'll notice that the, the part which shows six is the largest because it's the largest number. Six, two, and three, it's the largest. Two is the smallest part shown in blue on our bar model because it's the smallest number. So all of this information could be represented on our bar model. Now, here's another one for you. For every two blue cubes, I have six red cubes. So for every two blue cubes, I have six red cubes. But then for every six red cubes, I have one yellow cube. Can you draw this out? I want you to just pause the video here and have a go at drawing out this problem. Brilliant. So, first of all, we know two blue cubes. There they are. So it says for every two blue cubes, I have six red cubes. Super. So if I've got two blue cubes there, I know I've now got six red cubes as well. Now the second sentence. For every six red cubes, I have, every six red cubes, I have one yellow cube. 
so I've got my six red cubes there so I put on my one yellow cube and that's how it looks drawn out now for our next section what fraction of the items are blue well we can see that we've got nine cubes in total so if two of them are blue then nine is our denominator and two is our numerator because we're talking about two of the nine what fraction of the items are yellow? Remembering we've got nine in total. Write that down. Brilliant. So we've got nine in total. One of them is yellow. So that's one ninth. And we can't simplify either of those fractions. How does this sentence look as a bar model? So thinking about for every two blue cubes, I have six red cubes. And for every six red cubes, I have one yellow cube. How would this look as a bar model? Have a go at drawing the bar model into your book. Brilliant. So your bar model should look like this. We've got nine in total. Two out of the nine are blue cubes. Six are red cubes and one is a yellow cube. So there's our bar model, which matches up with our sentence. Well done if you manage to spot that. And if you manage to draw that correctly. Now, Fabio plants flowers in a flower bed. For every two red roses, he plants five white roses. And then he says, two-fifths of the roses are red. Is Fabio correct? Pause the video and answer the question. Super. So is Fabio correct? Well, let's have a look. He says for every two red roses, there's our two red roses, Every time he plants two red roses, he goes and plants five white roses. There's our five white roses. And then he says two fifths, so meaning two out of the up uh, two out of five of the roses are red. Is he correct? Well, the first thing to do is to count up the total number of roses. We know our denominator represents the total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's got seven roses in total. Two out of his seven are red. So he has a ratio here of two to five. For every two red roses, he has five white roses. You'll see here our ratio is a little bit different, different from our fractions. With our fractions, the denominator represents the whole and the numerator represents how much we're referring to. Whereas ratio, is when we're making a comparison. We're looking at the relationship between two things. We can see that two red roses, every time he has two red roses, he make, he plants five white roses. So that's the relationship that they have. Every time there's two of them, we get, every time there's two red roses, we get five white roses. And that describes the relationship between the two figures. You'll also notice quite often with ratio is that when you put the numbers together, you'll find the total. Now, you have to be careful there about how sometimes the sentences are worded. But in general, when you put those numbers together, you'll find the total. Sometimes ratio can be simplified, or sometimes it can be complicated even more. But in general, always think, well, actually, if I put these together, I can find the total. And that might mean I might have a few of those totals plotted within a group. But well, I'll show you a bit more of that as the lessons go on throughout the week. So, back to our question. Is Fabio correct? No, because there are seven roses in total. Two of them are red, so that means two out of seven are red, or two sevenths are red. Now have a look at the picture shown on screen. Remember, we're thinking about how to represent the part whole model today. That's our learning objective. Have a look at the three pictures on screen. Which one is the odd one out? Which one which one of which ones are the same and which one is different? Pause the video. Excellent. So this one in the centre is the odd one out because for this picture there are four in total. One out of the four is red. That means that's one quarter is red. The first fraction we can see shows us a third, and the bar model on the right-hand side with the blue and red again shows us a third. It shows us that one out of three. 
Whereas the one in the centre is one out of four, or one fourth, or one quarter. So no, this one is not correct. This one is the odd one out. Now here, we're going to have a bit more of a challenging question. So if you've been finding it a little bit tricky so far, then maybe skip this section. But for those of you who haven't, we're going to discuss this next bit together. So here goes. Do you agree with the working out and the answer? Amina planted some seeds. For every three seeds Amina planted, only two seeds grew. Altogether, 12 seeds grew. How many seeds did Amina plant? Now, the person who's worked this out says, well, there must be five seeds altogether, because for every three seeds Amina planted, only two seeds grew. So this person says, well, if two grew, then we do 12 divided by two, because 12 seeds, we know altogether 12 seeds grew. 12 divided by 2 equals 6. Then this person says, well, remember there were 5 seeds in total? 5 times 6 equals 30. So 30 seeds were planted. Pause the video here and explain whether you agree or disagree. And if you disagree, explain why. Excellent. Actually, this person is wrong because this shows us that out of a total of three seeds two of them grew and one of them didn't three is the total so our ratio here would be the ratio of seeds that were planted to the seeds that grew is a ratio of two to one so our person here read this question and thought oh yeah i'll go with the numbers i've been given three three seeds uh, Three seeds planted, two of them grew. No, 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 that's not our ratio, that's our total. Remember, ratio, when we put our numbers together, we find our total. So here, we actually needed a ratio of two to one. Now we know that the number of seeds that grew compared to the number of seeds that didn't grow was two to one. This means that if 12 seeds grew, then six didn't. And the way to work that out is to do, we know two seeds grew, and it says altogether 12 seeds grew, so we do 2 times 6, which equals 12, or 12 divided by 2, which equals 6. So that part, our person was right with. But then we also know that we had a ratio of 2 to 1, and whatever we do of one side, we have to do the other. So if we've timed one side by 6, we also need to multiply the other side by 6. So 1 times 6 equals 6. This would make a ratio of 12 to 6, meaning that 18 seeds were planted all together. Because we know that with our ratios, if we add our numbers together, we'll find our total. And 12 plus 6 equals 18. So that was a bit of a trickier one. Hopefully it made sense. Well done if you managed to get that. And if you didn't, well done for giving it a go, because I know that one's a bit more tricky. And for that one, we just had to think about and really envision what the problem was asking, even if it means drawing pictures. Now, I'd like you to have a go at using all the knowledge that we've been learning so far and using that to help you answer today's questions. So I'd like you to pause the video and answer the questions. Excellent. So, the first one is complete the sentences to compare the apples and oranges. So we can see we've got six apples, six red apples, and we've got a number of juicy red oranges. So for this question, all you had to do, we've got six apples, was now count up the oranges. And we have 12 oranges. So that would be a ratio of 6 to 12. Now, a fraction of the fruit are apples and a fraction of the fruit are oranges. So you need to complete that with the fractions. Remember, you need to count how much there are in total and then how much it is that we're referring to. So there are six apples out of 18 fruits. And there are 12 oranges out of 18 fruits. So there we have our fractions. Now complete the sentences to compare the sweets. The number of pink sweets is 
three times the number of green sweets. And we can see that because we've got one, two, three, four, five green sweets. And for the pink sweets, we've got 15. We've got 15 green sweets. So five to 15, we know we have to multiply that by three to get 15. Or we do 15 divided by five to get three. Now the number of pink sweets is mm, times the number of purple sweets. We know that we've got 15 pink sweets. We can see that we've got three purple sweets. What's 15 divided by three? That's right, it's five. You could also have done this as three times what equals 15 and you would have got five. Now for our next section. A fraction of the sweets are pink and a fraction of the sweets are green. So how would you work out what fraction of the sweets are pink and what fraction are green? Well, you need to count up the total number of sweets, which is 23. And we know that 15 out of the 23 are pink. We can't simplify that anymore because 23 is actually a prime number. That means it only has a factor. It can only be divided by one and itself. 15 can't be divided by 23. So we can't simplify that anymore. Now, what fraction of the sweets are green? Well, we know we've got 23 sweets altogether, and we know that we've got five of them that are green. So five out of 23 sweets are green. For every three purple sweets, there are mm, pink sweets. How would you complete this sentence? Every three purple sweets, there are mm, pink sweets. Well, purple sweets, are, purple sweets are what's shown in the problem. So for that, there isn't much calculation to do other than to just count the pink sweets. There are 15 pink sweets. For every three purple sweets, there are 15 pink sweets. But what if I took those three purple sweets and I changed it so I just had one purple sweet? How would that affect my ratio? Remember, at the moment, the first sentence there would be written as 3 to 15. If I changed it to one purple sweet, how would that affect the number of pink sweets? Well, whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. We can see that for three purple sweets, I've had to divide it by three to get one. So I do the same with the 15 pink sweets. I divide it by three and I get five. So for every one purple sweet, there are five pink sweets. Well done if you managed to get that. There are some red and green cubes in a bag. Two fifths of the cubes are red. For every two red cubes, there are three green cubes. So that is true because we know that there are two, there's only red and green cubes in the bag. So if two fifths of them are red, then the three fifths must be green. So for every two red cubes, there are three green cubes. For every two red cubes, there are five green cubes. Well, we know that's false because we just said there was three. For every three green cubes, there are two red cubes. That is true. That's the same as the first sentence here. But instead of putting the red cubes first, we've mentioned the green cubes first. And lastly, for every three green cubes, there are five red cubes. Well, that's the same as the second question. So that is false. So... Well done if you managed to get those and see if you can also explain your answers. So what next? I'd like you to have a look at the email that was sent to you this morning. You're going to be focusing on money, but you're going to do exactly the same, thinking about the parts and the whole model and using that to help you solve the problems. I'll give you an example of each of the three worksheets on screen so you can choose your level of difficulty. And just still making sure that you're representing the problem to help you trying to figure it out. Remembering with our ratio, whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. And remembering our ratio, when we put our numbers together, should reflect the whole. Okay? But that can also be simplified as well. Any questions at all? Remember, you can email us at the email address shown on screen. We look forward to seeing your work and we hope you have a great day. Bye.